morning. Good morning. Who is happy to be here today? Lift up your hands. I see different faces, but every Sunday, let me share a secret with you today. Brother Didoy is right here smiling at you guys. But he's actually sick. He's got fever. And I'm actually suffering from lack of sleep. But I'm here smiling and worshiping God. Because here at the feast, even if you have problems, even if you have trials, even if you have struggles, we're still happy. Amen. Amen. Because we believe that here, happiness is not the absence of problems. No, no, no. Happiness is the presence of God bigger than any of our problems combined. And that's why today, as we declare truth over our lives, as we declare that God is our God, I believe that we are unstoppable. Everybody say, I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Here we go. I want you to sing like you're happy today. Can you do that? Put your hands together. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible.
today and you want to receive your love, your transforming word. And yes, Lord Jesus, we're so excited for today. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I receive your love. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Woo! How many of you are ready for God's word? Say, I am ready. Woo! Get ready to be blessed, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's give it up for a dear preacher and friend, Brother Bo Sanchez. How many of you believe that life is wonderful? And so I want you just to greet somebody wonderful beside you. Tell that person with a hug or a handshake, you're wonderful. Yeah. And how many of you have come for the first time? Raise your hand. Welcome. 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 This is your home now. At the end of the feast, we want to give you a welcome gift. Please go to the lobby. Those of you who have come for the first time, thank you so much for being here. One more time, everybody say, life is wonderful. Life is wonderful. You know, even if there are some bad things happening to you, you should still be able to say, life is wonderful. Because I believe, no matter how overwhelming your problems are, that's just 1% or 2% or 3% or 5% or at the very maximum 10% of your life. 90% of, of your life is still the blessings of God. You are still blessed, wonderful. The, the bad thing that's happening to you, that's really a small part. If you really think about it, think of your life. You know, you're alive. You're breathing, I, I, I hope. Are you breathing? I'll be very scared if you're here and you're not breathing. You're a zombie. No, you're alive. You're, you're, you've got friends. You've got somebody beside you. You've got somebody beside you. You've got a family member, a friend. You've got somebody there. Just say thank you for being in my life. That, that's, that's a blessing. That, that's a blessing. How many, of you, how many of you ate breakfast this morning? Wow. That's a blessing, right? That, that's, woo. Now that, that breakfast, if that, was, that, if that was fruits, that's 10 times the blessing, huh? I mean, we, we talked about that a while, some weeks ago. Let, let's, let's believe, I believe in, I believe that supernatural healing and natural healing really, there's, there's really not much, not much boundaries between both. Supernatural healing, natural healing, they coalesce, they become one. And you're, you're, when you breathe, that's a blessing. That's healing. I, we talked about abdominal breathing, yes? A few weeks ago. Put your hands over your abdomen. Inhale through your nose, only through your nose. Set, feet set apart a bit. Inhale through your nose. Inhale. Let your abdomen rise. And then exhale, let it go down. You like that? I know some of your abdomens already large, but <laughs> but when you inhale, let make it larger. Make it larger. You know, it's not upper chest breathing; it's not middle chest. It's when you do this, you're healing yourself. People don't understand that. You're healing yourself. You detoxify. You 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 remove the stress in your body. Are you ready? Do this. Do this. Okay, I'll, I'll teach you one. One more thing. Are you ready? We're going to bless our minds and then our hearts and then our souls in the depths of our being. Inhale. Nose only. Inhale. And then exhale. You ready? Okay, we're going to bless our, our minds. Inhale. God's love. Exhale. All the stress, all the tension, all the fear, all the worry. Inhale. The love of God and bless your mind time. Inhale the love of God and 
exhale. Bless your mind. Amen. I want you to bless your heart now. Inhale and bless your heart. That's it. Inhale the love of God. Bless your heart. Exhale. One last time. Inhale the love of God and exhale. We're going to bless our soul. last thing. We're going to bless our body. Are you ready? Inhale. Really wide and then exhale. Your whole body. Your whole body is being blessed by God. Inhale the love of God. Exhale. That's so beautiful. One last time. Inhale the love of God. Exhale. How do you feel? Let's give the Lord a big hand for that. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're ready for more blessing, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. From the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth, everybody say that, lame from birth, was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg, say beg, beg, to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Everybody say money. money. Peter looked straight at him and as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, say it aloud with me, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk! And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Wow. At the end of this feast session, we're going to do this. We're going to be jumping and, and walking and praising God. You just watch. You just wait. Tell somebody beside you, just wait. <laughs> we're going to do this. We're going to be jumping up and down like you've never jumped before. But anyway, anyway. You know what I love about this story? Ask me what. We're going to have three healing stories this whole day. This is the first one. The second one, the third one, I'm going to ask other preachers to come here on stage with you and to bless you, anointed by God. But right now, this story, this story. He was a beggar, and he was asking for what? Money. Why? You're a beggar. You need to eat for that day. He was asking for money for that day, food for that day. God had other plans. Yes? He had better plans. Yes? Many times we miss out on what God wants to give us because we are asking for temporary things. God is looking for permanent things. You see, He was looking for relief. Say relief. relief. 
God wanted to give him restoration. We're, we think too small. Just tell somebody beside you, you think too small. You, you're asking for small things, and God is saying, I, I want to give you bigger things. He, he was asking for a day God was going to give him a livelihood for a lifetime. You understand that? The other thing that I love about this passage is that Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. But what I have, I give to you in the name, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. I love that. I love that. You know why we miss out on receiving God's blessing? Ask me why. How many of you want a miracle today? Everybody say, I want a miracle today. For your life, for your body, for your finances, for your relationships, for your family. One more time, I need a miracle today. Sometimes we miss out on receiving the miracle of God. Ask me why. Because unlike Peter, we have silver and we have gold. What am I saying? I'm saying we depend on our silver and our gold and what our silver and gold can buy. And we don't look to God as the source of all our love. I'm not saying don't do anything. You know me. I want you to act. I want you to move. I want you to do everything you can. But then at the end of the day, look at your heart because your heart has to be focused on God as the source of all our love and healing. There are many people, let's go to physical health. There are many people who are sick and die, not because of their sickness, because of, because, but because of their dependence on their medicines. I know that's controversial to say, but there are many cancer patients I know who die of their cancer. But it's not really because of their cancer, but because of the complications of the chemotherapy. Um, I know I'm saying something controversial, but they did a survey of oncologists in the U.S. You know what oncologists are? Doctors that focus on oncology. I'm so bright. But <laughs> the, the doctors, doctors who, who work on cancer patients, yes? They made a survey in the States for oncologists, and they asked a simple question. Doctor, if you get sick with cancer, will you also go through chemotherapy? Do you know the answer? Do you know how many said no? Ask me, how many? 91%. And, and of course, this is hush-hush, and this is secret. But, but wh 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 you know, the, the reason is they, they, they see it, you know? What am I saying? Sometimes we over-depend on our medicines and on our medical treatment, on the advanced care, and we, we depend. You know, when, when, some, when, when doctor says, you've got cancer, ah, chemo, chemo, give me chemo, and then you get well, and then after two years, it comes back, and then what happens? Oh, Lord, and, and, and change my diet, and cha change, you know, I'll eat more vegetables, and I'll, you understand that? You should have done that before, at the very beginning. When you get sick, your body is telling you something. God is telling you something. Change! No, we want medicine. We want to pop a pill as the solution to our problem. No, the solution is to listen to God speaking through your body. And God is saying, change. Change. Yes? You're, when, when you're sick, your body is saying, breathe deeper. Rest. Remove the stress. When you are sick, the body is not saying, give me a medicine. No, your body is saying, fruitify your breakfast. Vegify your lunch and dinner. Organify your meal. Move. Walk. Take a walk every morning. When, you're, when you are sick, your body is shouting out, spend more time in your relationships. You know, Don't re remove the stress, the toxic stress. Your body is telling you, when you are sick, your body is telling you, pray more. Your body is telling you, have more peace. Your body is telling you, enjoy life more. Your body is telling you, laugh more. Your body is telling not pop a pill. Am I saying, don't pop a pill? No. Am I saying, don't go to medicines, don't go to a doctor? I'm not saying that. They're gifts. But we need to go to the giver and to listen to what the giver is telling us. Amen? And Last thing I'm going to say before we pray. I've been in ministry for 30 plus years. 30 plus years. Prayed over so many people. Led so many prayer sessions for healing. I've led countless of them. 
Here's what I noticed. Ask me what. I've noticed that there are more miracles that happen when the people that attend the healing session are poor than they are rich. Why? Because the poor people, they can't buy their medicines. And they have no choice. They've got to go to God. But people who have silver and gold, Lord, please heal me. But I've got, just in case you fail, I've got medicines. They, I've seen more miracles happen when you're helpless, when you're desperate, when you have no silver and gold. Here's why. Ask me why. Helplessness is the birthplace of miracles. And when you are helpless, and right now you may be helpless, uh, maybe not physical sickness, maybe some other problem. You feel you're helpless. Congratulations. Because you're more open, more desperate to receive the miracle of God for your life. And, and that's my prayer for you today. You're going to hear two preachers today. Um, three, that's me. And then you're going to hear the two other builders of PICC Feast. Please welcome. You know them already. Your friends. Alvin Barcelona, George Gabriel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Jesus, I believe you are here. And you brought me here for a purpose. To bless me. Heal me. Heal me today in every area of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person, God will speak to you today. And He will speak through, right now, this moment, Alvin Barcelona. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Can I ask you a question? I have a very important question to, to ask you today. Are you ready? Do you want to get well? Thank you very much for answering. But, but you know, to, to many people, that, that's an insulting question. I mean, who doesn't want to get well? Hello. Obvious, ba? No, and then the, the, the reason why we're here is because we want to get healed. We want to get well. And why even need to ask that question? But let me read to you one story in the Bible that I love so much. And I'm going to tell you why. John chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. Are you ready to read with me? Everybody, please. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. How many years? 38 years. And continue, please. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time. Hey, Jesus knew he was ill. Okay? That, that's very clear. But let's continue. He said to him, Jesus said to this man, do you want to be well? Hello? <laughs> you know the background of this story. Uh, this happened near the pool of Bethesda. And in the pool of Bethesda, there are, there are a big number of, of sick people there. The ill, the blind, the crippled, the lame. Nandudun sila sa gilid ng pool. Because their belief is that when the water is stirred up, an angel from heaven is stirring it up, and it becomes a healing pool. And the first one who jumps to, into the pool will get healed. So obvious <laughs> na yung mga don ay gustong gumaling. Are you following? And then here comes Jesus who knew that the man was sick, who was ill. He asks him, do you want to get well? Mabuti na lang hindi si Michael V yung tinanong niya. Dahil ko si Michael V ngayon, kung napapanood niyo sa Bible Gang, may segment na gano'n, ah, gusto ko bang gumaling? Nandito ako sa healing pool. Ay, hindi. Nagpapalamig ako dito. Resort ito eh. 
may order nga ako pagkain dadating eh. Breakfast in bed ito eh. Of course, it's kind of obvious. It's very obvious that this man wants to be well. But why did Jesus ask him? In fact, look at the answer of the man. No, but the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. I don't know if this is an answer or, or no, hello, kaya nga ako nandito dahil gusto kong gumaling. But look at, at how Jesus responds and replies, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately, the man became well, took up his mat and walked. But, but the point again that I'm driving at is, why does Jesus need to ask the man if he wants to get well? In fact, in a related story, which I also love, about the blind Bartimaeus. Familiar? You read this story in Mark chapter 10, verse, uh, Mark chapter 10. But I, I, I read the excerpt saying, Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? And you know the background again of the story. Uh, Jesus being followed by hundreds of people. And, and, and blind Bartimaeus shouts upon learning that it was Jesus, the healer, the master, the rabbi. And he says, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And he was blind. And so getting Jesus' attention, he was called. And face to face with Jesus, Jesus asks him, What do you want me to do for you? Again, hello. Buti hindi si Vice ganda ito. Alisiguradong bulag ako eh. Alam mo gusto kong makalakad. Alam mo gusto kong makarinig kasi malabo yung tanong mo. But Jesus asks him, Ano ang gusto mong gawin ko para sa'yo? But, but the beauty of it is that Bartimaeus answers directly, Master, I want to see. So are you getting it now why Jesus wants, uh, why Jesus asks you, why, uh, if you want to get well? Answer, because Jesus wants you to tell Him. That simple. Kailangan mong sabihin sa Kanya. Not that He doesn't know about it, but you have to tell him. Why? I can give you 101 reasons. But I'm just going to share with you a, a few reasons. You know, I believe that some sick people, they really don't want to get well. Surprising as it may sound, pero isipin nyo. May mga taong may sakit, pero naging komportable na sa kanilang sakit. In fact, some Bible scholars, no, would, would question this man in the first reading. He was lying there for 38 years. But, but, baka naman wala talaga siyang sakit. Baka, o kaya baka komportable na siya sa kanyang sakit. And, and all he needed to hear was for someone to tell him, Hey, tama na yan. <laughs> Tayo ka na. Get up your mat and walk. Take charge of your life. Start doing something with your life. But minsan-minsan kasi nakakakita tayo ng mga taong bumabalik sa kanyang sakit o ayaw nang gumaling dahil okay na sa kanila yung tinutulungan na lang sila. O pinagsisilbihan na lang sila. That's why Jesus have to ask you, has to ask you, gusto mo ba talagang gumaling? And then take charge of your life and start living a life of a healed person. In fact, yung, yung isa namang klaseng tao, I believe most people would say they want to get well. They want to get healed. Amen? Pero sabi lang nila yun. <laughs> Ayaw nila talaga. You want some examples? No, um, a favorite example of mine would be no, yung taong may sakit sa puso. No, the kandidato na siya for heart bypass, and he cries out to the Lord, Lord, may sakit ako sa puso, iba bypass na ako, wala pa, wala akong pera para sa bypass, Lord, tulungan mo ako, and a miracle happens. Gumaling siya, and the card, his cardiologist is baffled that oh, gumaling ka, magaling ka na, hindi mo na kailangan ng bypass. And, and he celebrates and says, magaling na ako, praise God. Dahil magaling na ako, mamayang gabi, iinbitahin ko yung mga barkada ko, magiinuman kami, magpupulutan kami lechon, ng crispy pata, ng, ng chicharon bulaklak, at bukas ganun ulit ang gagawin namin. At, are you listening? So this man wants to get well, pero ayaw talaga niya. And, and you can... Guess no, that, that, that babalik yung kanyang sakit. Dahil sabi lang niya gusto niya sumaki, uh, uh, um, gusto niyang gumaling, pero bumabalik siya doon sa kanyang ugali. In fact, that's the main reason of our series, the biggest winner. So that not only you 
that, that you get healed, but you continue living the life of a healed person. That's why you have to tell Jesus. Listen to this. Because telling Jesus is also telling yourself. So you have the resolve. Na pag nagdi-decision ako, gusto kong gumaling, Panginoon, at, at, at makikikooperate ako sa kagalingan niya. Does that make sense with you? Again, I've got lots of reasons to share with you, but I'm just gonna give you my, 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 my final reason. You have to tell Jesus because telling Him is already healing you. Telling Him already starts the healing and, and, and in many ways, it's already healing itself. You know, I, I'm, I'm thinking, for example, of, of, of the, the sacrament of confession. No, it's, it's, it's cleansing. It's, it's healing our spiritual illness. Alam na ng Panginoon ang mga kasalanan natin bago mo sabihin. Pero kailangang sabihin mo sa Kanya sa pamamagitan ng pare. Or go to the confessional box and tell your sins to the priest. Why? Marami sa atin ang sigurado ang naranasan. Sinabi mo pa lang na unload ka na. Talagang paglabas mo, ho! Ah, malaya na ako at, 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 at ah, malinis na ako at and I'm free and, and I'm forgiven. Madalas sinasabi mo pa lang, ikaw ay gumagaling na. Alam niyo, alam ko yan kasi a, a lot of you know that I, I'm, I'm a healed man from a fatal disease. No, I was a candidate for colon cancer but my healing took some time. Of course, there are lots of reasons that, that, that healing should also take 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 some time, no? Pero yung sa akin, ang isang practical, ang isang totoong dahilan kaya ang tagal ko ding gumaling kasi ang tagal kong inami na may sakit ako. Kahit na dinudugo na ako, inuubo na ako ng tuyo, nangangayalit na ako, I had all the symptoms of cancer and doctors after my my my, my experience would tell me na ako, malala ka na nga nun, Brother Alvin, pero bakit nagtagal? Ayokong sabihin. Denial. Kaya ang dami kong reklamo sa asawa ko, ah, talagang masakit na hindi ito ko, hindi ko na makaya, ang hinang-hinana ako. Hindi ka magpa-doktor na tayo. Pero pagpupunta na kami sa doktor, eto ako, tatanungin sa akin ng doktor, ano bang ba nakaramdaman mo? Kahit ano galing ng doktor mo, kahit ano galing ng health e expert mo, pre pre eh, sigurado, tatanungin ka muna niya kung ano nakaramdaman mo. For him to start recommending the, the, the treatment. Right? O, pero eto ako. Pag dating namin sa doktor, anong naramdaman mo? Sasabihin ko, wala po, okay po ako. Yung asawa ko sisipahin na, ayan ka naman. Uh, so, anong naramdaman mo ulit? Sabihin ng doktor, ah, okay po ako, okay. Sabihin ng doktor, ano yung ginagawa mo dito? Makakapi ka? <laughs> Ba't ka dumaan dito? Na pag uwi namin, ako, many times, ganun na mangyayari. Aawain ako ng asawa ko, sabihin niya, love, ayan ka na naman, kaharap ka na ng doktor, tutulungan ka na niya, ayaw mong sabihin. Pero bakit ayaw ko sabihin? I was afraid. I was afraid that he might change something in me or tell me that I'm really sick or change my lifestyle or do this and do that. I, I didn't want to face these things. And the, the, only when I started admitting that I was sick and confessing that I was sick, that help started coming. And I would discover that it would apply to other areas of my life. Hey, even with my finances, every time it gets sick, uh, every time I make a big decision and I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about that decision, I go to my financial mentors, I go to my financial coaches, I ask for help. Even with my relationships, pag alam kong medyo uh, rocky, medyo uh, pupunta ako sa mga experts, sa mga kaibigan ko. Why? Help is there. All you need to do is to tell them and to ask for it. And, and sino pa sa atin ang di nangangailangan ng tulong? Which, which, which brings me to the last reason I'm gonna share with you why you need to tell Jesus you need to tell Jesus that you need Him. My final story, to, to, to drive this point. No? Minsan may isang bata, no? pangalan niya si Buknoy, no? naglalaro siya ng kanyang slingshot, no? old-fashioned slingshot na ino, iniikot mo. Nung pinakawalan na niya yon, yung bato tumama sa puno, bumanda, tumama sa isa sa mga pato ng lolo niya. Y yung, yung lolo niya nag-aalaga ng maraming pato. Pero may tinamahang isa, bumagsak. Yung the rest of the pato, no, nagliparan dahil nabulabog. Pero yung tinamaan, bumagsak, hindi na bumangon. Kinabahin mo siya. Tumakbo siya. Ginigising niya yung pato. Ayaw magising. Sinipiaranan niya. May naotomat resuscitation niya. Ayaw! <laughs> Napatay niya yung pato! 
pinagpawisan siya ng malagkit, kinaban siya, nanginginapatay ko yung bata ng lolo ko. Anong gagawin ko dito? Dahil siya na dito, dahil siya'y kinabahan, he found himself digging a hole. Naghukay siya. And, and he buried the dead duck, the evidence of his crime. No? <laughs> Nilibig niya. At nakita niya, wala namang nakakita. Clean naman yung crime. No? <laughs> Kaya, uwi na ako. Hindi naman mapapansin ang lolo ko yan. Mahami namang pato. Hindi naman nagbibilang yan. <laughs> So, umuwi na siya. No? Pero pag uwi niya, malapit lang yung bahay niya doon, halos tapat lang o sa likod lang. Pag uwi niya, pagpasok niya ng pintuan na medyo kinakabahan pa siya, sinalubong siya ng kapatid niyang babae. Hi, kuya! Ha! Gulat siya! No? Ganyan tayo, pag may ginagawang masama, lahat nakakagulat. Eh, di ba? <laughs> guilty ka eh, guilty. No? Sabi niya, tabi ka nga dyan, dadaan ako. Okay, kuya. No? After a few steps na medyo kinakabahan pa siya, Sinabi ng kapatid yung babae, Kuya, ano na naman yon? Nakita ko yung pato. Ah! <laughs> May tistigo! <laughs> Natatakbo siya. Hindi naman niya pwedeng patayin. No? May kapatid niya. <laughs> Sikreto natin, please. Secret, secret. Huwag mo sasabihin kay Lolo. Huwag mo sasabihin. Nakita ko, Kuya, nililibig. <laughs> secret, I love you. I love you. I love you. You're the best sister. Eh, dalawa lang naman sila mga kapatid. Hindi ba? <laughs> Okay, kuya, sabi ng sister niya. Hindi ko sasabihin. Promise, promise. So, end of story na, no? Nakapatay siya ng pato. May nakakita. Promise naman, hindi sasabihin. So, tapos na sana. <laughs> hindi pa natapos. Alam niyo bakit? Itong dalawang magkapatid, may mga duty araw-araw ng trabaho sa bahay. Kinagabihan, tinamad bigla yung babaeng kapatid. Sabi, kuya, ikaw nga magugas ng pinggan. Sabi ng kuya niya, duty mo magugas ng pinggan, ha? Ang pato. Kukuha sa pinggan. Kukuha siya ng pinggan. Ay, hindi niya duty. Aba, kinabukasan. Inabuso talaga siya ng kapatid niya. Kuya, gawin mo nga itong assignment ko sa math. Assignment mo yan. Pagkagawa mo sa akin. Kwak, kwak, kwak. <laughs> araw, araw. He was blackmailed by the sister of, of Ovis dahil, dahil doon sa nakita niya. Kaya the, the days no, went on for weeks and... and Sumobra na yung kapatid niya. Isang araw, kuya, pakikamot mo nga yung likod ko. Sobra na yan, sabi ng kuya niya. Ayoko na, susumbong kita. Tama na, tama na ang pagpa-blackmail mo. Ako na magsasabi kay Lolo. Ah, ang meaning ko na sa kanya, baka ang tandaan na natin, ginaganyan mo pa ako, baka nobentaan niyo, kwak, 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 kwak ka pa rin. Umakit siya sa second floor, nandun yung Lolo niya sa may bintana, nagkakape. He mastered all his courage. Kailangan sabihin na niya ito. Pakawalan na niya sa kanyang dibdib at tahan-tahan. Lo, yung lolo niya mabait eh. Ano yun, apo? Sabihin po ako sa inyo. Ano yun, sabihin mo? And, and to sinabi niya, sabihin mo, sinabi niya mabilis, no pa? Napatawarin mo ako, napatawarin mo ako. Napatay ko yung pato mo. Napatay ko isa sa mga pato mo. Alam mo yung lolo niya, tahimik na tahimik na nakikinig. Napatay mo yung pato. Opo, no. Alam ko na yun eh. <laughs> ano, no? Al alam nyo na napatay ko yung isa sa mga pato nyo? Oo. Oh. Paano nyo nalaman? Nandito ko sa taas, pinanonood kita, no? <laughs> Mina mouth to mouth mo pa nga, kita ko. Huh? Alam nyo pala yung nangyari, lolo naman, sabi niya. Bakit hindi nyo pa sinabi sa akin na, na, na alam nyo na pala? Alam nyo ang pinahirapan ako ng kapatid ko? Alam ko, sabi na lolo, ang sipag mo araw-araw. Eh. Huh? Lolo naman, sabi niya, sana sinabi nyo na sa akin para natapos na itong paghihirap ko. And the grandfather tells him, Alam mo, anak, kahit alam ko, dapat ikaw ang magsabi sa akin. No? Dahil sa pagsasabi mo, you free yourself and unburden yourself of that heavy load. Kaya ngayon, nasabi mo na, malaya ka na, at, at uh, hindi ka na ibablock may uli ng kapatid mo. At lalo mong madidinig, yung matagal ko nang ginawa, pinatawad na kita, anak. Tell Jesus that you're desperate, that you're helpless, and He will come. And, and when you confess to Him your need for healing, prepare to live a life of a healed person.
God bless you. George Gabriel. Everybody say quack, quack. Can you give another hand for Brother Alvin? <laughs> Brother Bo talked about the need to be desperate. Brother Alvin talked about the need to confess, the need to tell Jesus what you want. I'm here to tell you about the need for community. Say community. community. I'm going to share this with you through a famous Bible verse. Can we flash it on the screen? Read it with me together, please, from Mark chapter 2. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people, so many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Let's jump to verse 11. I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. Can you tell the person beside you, get up, get up. take your mat, take your mat, and go home. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not just yet. Say this with me together. You need community. Go. You need. Hold someone beside you. Say, you need community. You need community. You know what? When I was very young, I entered community at the age of 12. And when I entered community at the age of 12, I, I was very insecure. I was very insecure. I was bullied a lot. And, and then I had this mentality that I had to, to be cool and I had to wear the right clothes. Yung mga siga, yung mga nakakatawa sa school, they had these certain brand of jeans and shoes. And so I, I would look at them, I would memorize how they dress and I would try to be like them. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be like them. But one day, right, when I entered community, I saw a group of people on stage and they were laughing and they were singing praises and they were dancing. And I saw the ones on the side, they were smiling and they were all friends. And I said to myself, I think... I want to be like them. And so when I entered community, I started attending Bible studies. I started to go to the prayer meeting, learning how to worship. Then, then we listened to praise music. And, and little by little, my friends were forming me, were shaping to me. Into what? Ask me what? Into someone who looks like Jesus. That is what happens in community. In community, we will go through many, many things. We will go through through crazy things. We will do crazy things for you. Just like the friends of that paralytic man. They made a hole in the roof. Can you imagine how, how far they thought of that? It's like, okay, we can't do this. It's not, but we're not going to give up. Many times, I was a difficult case in community. Many times, I was hard-headed. Many times, I would make the same mistakes. But my friends, my community members, they did not give up on me. They did everything, including, you know, making a hole in the roof just so that they can bring me closer to Jesus and so I could look more like Him. That's why I wanted to look like them. That's why I wanted to be like them. Because in community, community shapes you. Can you say that? Community shapes you into a person who looks like Jesus. And what will determine who you are 10, 5 years from now are the books that you read and the people you hang out with. And so if you want to look like Jesus, this is my recommendation. Don't stop going to community. Tell the person beside you, don't stop. Don't stop. I remember in one of my, you know, in, in, when I was a single person, I was shepherding, I was pastoring this group of singles, around 20 of them. We met every month. Every month, like clock, clockwork, we would talk about the Bible. We'd talk about their lives, their problems. We would share. I got to know their personalities, their jobs, their emotions, their insights, everything. I got to know them so well. 
month after month, we would meet. Sometimes we would meet weekly if we had a project. And they all had something in common. You know, they had some expression in common. All of them had this common expression. Yes. Ganon. Ganon sila magsalita. Pag may bago kang sapatos, darating ka, oh yes, bago sapatos. Pag dumating ka, medyo pumayat ka, napansin nila, yes, ang payat na. You know, pag nagsisharing kami, tapos na-promote ka, yes, ang taray. Ganon, ganon sila. Yes, sabayan nyo nga, subukan nyo, ready, go. Yes. Yeah, may saya dapat, yes, may ganon. And can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Yes. <laughs> ang galing nyo, ha? <laughs> I couldn't stand it. Naiinis ako. Naiinis ako doon. Tuwing sasabihin nila yung yes, ako parang, ay, yan na naman. Yes na naman. Parang bakit ba yes nang yes? Lahat na lang yes, yes, yes. I couldn't stand it. I didn't know why. I just didn't like the expression. After a few months of hanging out with them, listening to them, yes. I was YMing with a friend in the States, a friend I hadn't seen in a long time. My friend was telling me, how are you, George? I'm like, oh, I'm great. How are you? He goes, well, I have good news. I'm like, wow, what's the good news? He said, I bought a brand new car. And I replied to that person, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that person replied to me, uh, George, is that you? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, nakuha ko na Yes, na yes na rin ako. But that's how it is. That's how it is when you're around people a lot, when you spend time with them, when you learn to love them, you learn to walk, you learn to talk like them, you learn to be like them. Again, I say, if you want to be like Jesus, if you want to become more like Christ, community will shape you. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, yes. Palakpakan natin si Lord. Give Him a clap offering. The second thing I want to tell you is that community heals you. Say, community heals you. I just transferred to a condo a few weeks ago, and I'm not used to... Yes. <laughs> You're a guy. I, co I transferred to a condo a few weeks ago, and it's, it's a new condo. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. We thank God for it. We're so happy. And in the past two weeks, I've been adjusting. Trying to get used to the layout, you know, where everything is. And it's, it's, a, it's a new experience for me. You know, in my old house, where I used to live, where I used to live with my parents, my door, my room is situated in the back. So I have a window overlooking the garden, but no one can really see inside. And so I'm very, you know, when I take a bath, sometimes I'll get ready in my room, I'll wipe myself. Sometimes I'll drop the towel and just dress up. The, please don't try to imagine, okay, what, what I look like. When I, but I would do that. And, and it's okay because no one can see me. Here in the new condo, you know, I'm just kind of doing the same thing. I went out of the shower. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord, for this new place. I'm drying myself. Then I dropped my towel, turned around to get my clothes. When I turned around, I saw there was this big, big window, okay? And there were so many condos across. I'm like, oh my God! It's a window. I closed the window. I'm like, sana walang nakakita. In all my glory, okay? And then when I turned around, I looked at the room and I noticed the room got dark. It got dark because the lights were off. The window was wide open a while ago. The light was coming in, but when I shut the window, there was no more light. There was just a little light coming in from the small opening in the window. And then a thought hit me. Just because it is dark does not mean that the sun is not shining. Does that make sense to you? The sun was shining outside, but my window was small, and that's why it was dark inside. Brothers and sisters, your faith is a window. Can you say that? Faith, faith. Is, a is a window. Your faith is a window where the blessings of God shine into your life. Now, here's the thing. 24-7, God is loving you. There's no question about whether He wants to heal you. There's no question whether about He wants to bless you. There's no schedule. God doesn't say, okay, on Monday, 3 o'clock, I'm going to answer your prayer. On Tuesday, if you go to Bible study and you're with a group of people, okay, I'm going to love you. Or at the feast at 10.45, I'm going to re release my blessings. You better come here or else you're, gonna not, you're, you're not going to catch it because this is the only place it happens. No. He doesn't have to make up his mind whether or not he's going to love you. 24-7, God's love and blessing and mercy is shining down on you. Amen. Amen? Amen. 
Amen? God's love is shining upon you like the sun. The question is, how big is your window? You might not be receiving the healing yet because your faith might be small. And so what do you do? Brother, can you please pray for me? You get a person from community and that person says, okay, I'm going to pray with you. Come pitayo. You have me on your side. What happens? His faith plus your faith, bigger window. You write your intentions in the intercessory basket and then they pray for it and you know you have all these prayer warriors. What's happening? Bigger window. The more talks you hear, the more testimonies you hear, the more people who are on your side, bigger window, bigger window, bigger window until your faith is so wide open that the blessing of God that is shining in your life, no problem. I'm receiving the healing right now. Why? Because I have a big window of faith. Amen? Tell someone beside you, increase your window. Increase your window. Palakpakan natin si Lord one more time. That's what community does. That's how community heals you. And I want you to know that because of the love and support that my community members gave me, little by little, my self-esteem issues, little by little, my insecurities, little by little, God started melting them away with the light and the warmth of His love. Even now, when I joined the Connect group and the Caring group with Brother Bo and Brother Alvin, as a more mature Christian, I'm learning new things and my faith is being increased more. Don't be absent from your Caring group. Don't be absent from your Connect group. Don't be absent from service. Keep on indulging. Keep on involving and soaking yourself in community so that your faith will increase more and more. Amen? One last thing I want to tell you that community does. Something very special happens here in community. We intercede for you. And intercede literally means to stand in the gap for someone. That person wants to get there, and that person said, you know, you stand in the gap. You help become a bridge for that person. I'm going to show this to you through the video on the screen. Let's watch it together. Flip side, maybe the sweetest tape you'll ever see. Parents, get your kids over here to show them this is a good example of a brother helping his little sister. Stop, come on, give him a clap offering, all right. When Jesus died on the cross, when he gave his life for you, Amen. that cross became a bridge. A bridge between you and God. A bridge between you and your dreams. A bridge between you and healing. And for those of you who feel you're far away, those of you who feel that, you know, I don't know God too well. I'm not that good in prayer. I don't think I deserve it yet. Community is here to intercede for you, to lay down a bridge between you and your God, between you Amen. and your dream, between you Amen. and the healing, prosperity, and abundance that you desire. Stay in community. Love your community. And thank God for your community. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, George. May I invite the guys and the girls that I've invited to pray for you, our Connect group heads, our Caring group heads, our ministry heads, the healing ministry, the intercession ministry, you know, all those people that we assign to pray for everyone here. We're going to ask them to stand here in front or in the aisles or at the back. Just come, come forward. We, we want to be, this is a time now where we're going to bring together all that we've learned this whole month and we're going to be praying for you. If you need someone to pray over you, this is the time to do it. We're going to spend time in worship and in prayer. We're going to bask in the presence of God. How many of you were blessed with Brother George and Brother Alvin's messages? Amen.
Thank God for these wonderful men and prophets of God. Alvin leads the feast session at 4 o'clock in the afternoon here. Those of you who have friends who don't want to refuse to wake up in the morning, feel free to invite them at a 4 o'clock session. Brother George leads the feast session at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And he leads it at, a, at a, another room here in PICC every Sunday. And it's, it's amazing the, the amount of worship that they do there. So if you're, if you're someone who looks for that, um, go to the 2 o'clock session. And everybody say, I need a miracle. Could we all stand up? We're going to... So these people here in front or at the back or in the aisles, and they'd love to pray for you. They'd love to bless you. And we're going to come before His presence. If you could just lift up your hands as a symbol of openness and surrender to God. And just say this after me. Father, I am here because you want me to be here. This is of your doing. This is, this is not my doing. This is part of your plan that I'm standing here and I'm humbling myself. I'm removing my pride and I ask you, heal me. Heal me. Bless me. Brother Alvin was saying, brothers and sisters, how you need to tell God what you need and tell Him what you need. Tell Him the miracle that you need, maybe for your family, maybe for a friend, maybe maybe for your future, maybe for your job. Tell God what you need. Tell God. Tell God. He's listening to you right now.
the monsters. He walks in the aisles. He walks between the rows. I want you to receive the healing of God and the miracle of God that you're seeking for. He is touching you right now. I want you to surrender to Him all that is holding you back and say to Him that you love Him and that you believe in Him and that you follow Him. Amen. Miracles. Miracles are happening in this room.
for God. Do what you can, but always look at Him who is the source of all your blessing. There, are may, there may be dreams in your life right now that are not yet there. It's, you, you've not yet reached it. My novena to God's love, the, the covers are, are getting frayed already because the dreams that I have written there, they're still to be fulfilled in the future. They're not yet here. It says here 1,000 feasts. We only have 130. We've got a long way to go. So, so I'm, I'm holding on to this old novena to God's love because these dreams, I, I'm, tr I'm doing all I can, but then I'm helpless because it's only the miracle of God that can make these dreams come true. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, my, I'll give you a very simple example. My kids, I love my kids. I have a dream for them. My dream is that when they grow older, they will love Jesus. When they grow older, they'll be faithful to Jesus. When they grow older and living in the and living in the world, they will be faithful to Jesus. So what do I do? I spend time with them, I talk with them, I train them, I pour my heart to them. But at the end of the day, I know it needs a miracle from God for that dream to come true. So what do I do? I'm helpless. I do all I can, but I'm helpless. It has to be the miracle of God. If you're dreaming for something. Maybe you're dreaming for a beautiful family. You're dreaming for a, for a, a, a partner in life. Maybe you're dreaming for a, for a job. You're dreaming, you're dreaming for a fin great finances. I do not know what you're dreaming for a ministry, but whatever dream that is, do all you can, please. But at the end of the day, be helpless. Because helplessness is the birthplace of a miracle. Lift up your hands again. And everybody say, I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. Every miracle that you want to give to me. In Jesus' name. Amen.
know that we are more than conquerors. You keep us by your love. Declare it. We know this. We know that we are more. through this community through our activities through the friendships that we have formed day after day you continue to set us free you continue to heal us you continue to form us and shape us in your likeness in Jesus name in Jesus name amen. Jesus name amen yeah, make some noise for God yes. come on Are you healed? Yes. Are you blessed? Yes. Are you free? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? One really good sign, one real sign of a healed, happy person is that they have a dance in their step. Are you ready to party, brothers and sisters? All right. Put your hands together. Come on, like this. Let's take this. And why don't you move with us? Come on, to your right. Come on. Come on, everybody. All right. We're going to sing a song today about rejoicing. And I want you to know that when we dance, all your problems, all your sickness, your past, and all the things that you want to forget about, we trample on them with our feet when we rejoice in dancing. Are you ready to get down? Yeah. All right. I'm going to sing the verse for you. Pick up the melody. This is how it goes, all right? Keep the hands coming. Let's go. I'm coming back to the start Where you found me I'm coming back to your heart Now I surrender, take me This is all I can bring Come on hey, want to see you get down
this entire hall into one great dance floor of God. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. All right, some of the guys are going to come with me. Follow me, all right? Are you watching? You see where I am? Come on, boys, let's go. Some of our worship leaders are going to join you, and we're going to transform this entire place into a disco, into a party for God. Are you following? If I'm here, I want you to face me. Everybody face me. Turn this way. All right. Excuse me. All of the people down here, I want you to face this way. Come on. And I want you to face one another. Can you see everyone else in this hall? Face here. Everybody say hi to one another. Uh, keep those hands coming. Come on. All right. When I shout, when I say go, I want this entire place from top to bottom to rock for Jesus. We're going to shout and make a joyful noise and we're going to rejoice with our feet and we're going to trample upon all the sickness and all the disease, not only in your life, but in the lives of your family. Do you want that? Are you ready? This is God's great dance floor and we're going to rejoice on the count of four, on the count of three. Come on, say one, two. One, two, three, come on! Hey, come on! Jump, man, jump, 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 beside you give that hug and tell that person you're wonderful <laughs> let's all be seated everybody and that's how we formally end our series on health and healing entitled the big winner are you blessed everybody yeah. Amen. this coming Sunday this next week, we're going to start a brand new series and you will love it, I'm sure. For the whole month, we will be discussing about a very important message. Are you ready? Yes. Our theme is, our series is, Jesus in Blue Jeans. We're going to talk about that and we're going to allow the Lord to speak to us. Basically, we're going to talk for the whole month, we're going to talk about how to connect to God in the world. How to connect to God in your home, in your office, in the marketplace, in the street, wherever, whatever you're doing in your business, in your job. How do you connect to God? How do you be spiritually nourished? We're, we're go it's going to be a fantastic series this coming Sunday, starting this Sunday. And I, I want you to bring your friends, your classmates, your neighbors, everyone. Tell them to come because they need to be nourished by the Lord. Amen? Amen. 
All right. Thank you, Brother Bo. Everybody, take a deep breath. Exhale. Lahat tayo sigaw. Ganon. Wow. All right. Hiniingal pa. Amen. Amen. Friends, before you, you know, we give our best to God, as you, you know, write down your Thanksgiving prayers, as you write down your petition prayers, two announcements. Number one, Brother George shared about how the community can bless you through the small groups, through the connect groups. So we'd like to encourage you. We highly encourage you to be blessed, not just by the fees, but also by our caring groups. So if you want to have more information on that, we have a table at the lobby. Ask them. And also, not only being part of a small group, be part of our ministry. You know, serve uh, with us, and I'm sure you'll also be blessed in an amazing way. Tignan mo nga katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, you're qualified to serve. And amen. Let's, everybody, let's all stand. I'd like to ask this question. Are you blessed today? And if you're blessed today, I'm sure, friends, there are a lot of people that would also like to feel what we're feeling right now. Yes? There are also other people that would like to be blessed just like how we are blessed today. And the, you know, the love offering that we give, the support that we give, no, we are supporting our community, the Life Jesus family, the other ministries of Brother Bo Sanchez, and the other feast to your giving. And so as early as now, you know, claim abundance in your life. Yes? So I'd like to invite you to all raise up your love offering envelopes and say this prayer after me. All together we say, Lord, thank you so much for the blessings that you have been pouring on me. I want to give back, Lord Jesus. Use my love offering to bless many. Amen. Let's also extend our hands towards our love offering baskets. Lord, fill these baskets with your provisions, with your love, with your resources so that we can be used in order to bless the world. And we pray this in your mighty name. All together we shout, Amen. Let's continue to come before God. Come on. Back to the start where you found me. I'm coming back to your heart. Now I surrender. Take me. This is all I can do.
and amen. amen.